Hallelujah. Thursday, 6 p.m. <laughs> let's read. Let's read that scripture again. Psalm 89, verse 15. We've been reading it all the services. The Bible says, Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. Look at a better translation. Blessed are the people who know the passwords. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. Passwords of joy. So joy is passworded. But we know the password. The third uh, translation. Blessed and happy are the people who know the joyful sound of the trumpet's blast. By the grace of God, by the grace of God on Thursday, the conference is starting by 6 p.m. And the first thing we are doing is to blow our trumpet to commence the, the conference. That's how we are starting. For the first three minutes, we will just blow the trumpet. Trumpets are spiritual. And we are going to look into the word of God then to see different uh, Many as to see what the word of God has to say about trumpets. But on the sixth, on sorry, by 6 p.m. on the first of September. First of September, 6 p.m. Get ready to start this conference with a long blast. Three minutes. All of us together. Are you ready? Yes, sir. That's why I've been saying that please wear white. White shirt, white t-shirt, white native. Not it doesn't have to be full white, but just let there be a touch of white. So you look like an angel. As you are ready to blow the trumpet. <laughs> well, it's not compulsory, but it's just going to make it look uniform. That's what we are trying to do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me appreciate the choir this morning. Let me put the hands together for them. God bless you all. Are we said this morning? And now it's afternoon. Can I have a seat? It's supposed to be a brief service. Hallelujah. <laughs> so first service we spoke about unity of the brethren. When it comes to corporate anointing that unity is needed. And then we spoke about sac sacrifice second service. And I said each of those things we look at them in details more. Just a bit here and there. That was what we did. That it's important to understand that the power of God is drawn towards people who are united together. There is an anointing that comes upon a congregation, a group of people, a family, where there is unity, even a corporation or a corporate, whatever it is, when God sees unity, it moves speedily, it moves swiftly. Hallelujah. And then we talk about sacrifice also, and we look at scriptures. So Genesis 8, and then we look at Genesis 11, and several other scriptures. For time, I will not go back into it, but I just want to say something to this third service this morning, or this afternoon. Hallelujah. One of the things that we must get familiar with as believers, our words are not ordinary words, especially when we speak from God's word. And it is expected of a Christian to always speak by the Spirit to describe your future. Christianity is called the great profession of faith. Declaration is an integral part of Christianity. It is very important that you voice out what your spirit believes. Mm. Everybody in the world is familiar with that passage in 1 Samuel 17, 45. Thou comest against me with sword and spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God of Israel, the God of the army of Israel, whom you defy. And then David began to mention things that he would do to Goliath. I'm going to take up your head and I will give it to the boy. And he said all those things. 
And the Bible records, there was no sword in the hand of David. When you are being inspired to speak by the Spirit, you will speak as you are led. But details are left to God. But it's, it is expected, especially when we have just prayed and we are stirred by the Spirit of God. Maybe when next we continue, I will speak about worship. When you spend time in worship, you should receive words from God that you declare with your mouth. In Daniel 10, so let's read that first, first Samuel 17. I just want to show you something. David began to describe the results, the outcome of the battle in Goliath before the battle started. How many words have you sent to your future? And not just ordinary words, God's word. There is an anointing in God's word. And when you speak it, something happens. Look at this. The Philistines said, come, let's go to verse 45. Then David said, thou comest with, to me with sword and with spear and with shield. But I come in the name of the Lord God, the God of armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Next verse. This day, the Lord will deliver thee into my hand. I will smite thee, take up thy head, and I will give it to the I will give the carcass of the of the host of Philistine to the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. David went beyond the one man threatening him. He said, "I'm going to feed the entire host to the animals. I mean, to the birds, and the whole world, all the earth may know that there is God in Israel." Can every Christian speak like this? Yes, you can. A part of it is because of faith. A part of it because of the spirit of prophecy. Listen. Hebrews 11. Let's read. Hebrews 11. 1. Now, this is very important. What I'm about to show you in Hebrew. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Verse 2. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Now, verse 3 is where I'm going. Pay attention here. Through faith, we understand that the worlds, not one world, worlds, realms, cosmos, regions, worlds, were framed by the word of God. That word framed there in Hebrew is also equal to chizu. So the Bible says that the words were framed when, like, somebody walking a carpenter doing a carpentry work with chisel continue to shape something left right center until it gives you the shape that you want now the bible says be imitators of god ephesians 5 if god chisel the arts frame them by the words of his mouth your future and your life the life of your family can be chiseled by the word of your mouth it will not happen overnight, but it will certainly happen. That you begin by your words. Cut off what shouldn't be there. But you are not going to use your word. You are going to use scriptures to put your life in a direction that the Bible says it should go. It's your responsibility. The Bible said that by faith, we saw that God chiseled the earth by the word of his mouth. And you are in God's image. And the Bible says, be imitators of God. For Jesus' prayer said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the beginning, God saw darkness and he began to chisel with the words of his mouth. Listen, forever, forever, Mark eleven twenty four. we always be true. Oh, Lord Jesus. I, you know, today I said I don't want to preach more today because I lost my voice, but I don't know. Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you with me? Are you yes, with sir. me? Yes, this chiseling, it involves weeding. The only way, you have no choice but to speak. The only way you can let your ground not have weed is to plant something. Any ground that is left fallow, weed will grow there. The earth is under a curse. If you say nothing, the will of the adversary will be popping out one by one. 
If we don't want weed, if we have a farm size of this auditorium, and you don't want weed there, please plant something. If you don't plant anything, it's an automatic invitation to weed. Too many Christians are too quiet. So weeds are growing in their lives. A man, Jesus gave an illustration in Mark chapter 4. A man planted a field and he went to sleep and then he woke up and he saw tears. And they said, an enemy has done this. The enemy will always plant tears. Are you following me? I, I want to show you something. When Daniel started saying some things, an angel showed up. Daniel 10 verse 12. Look at what the angel told, the, told Daniel here. Daniel 10, 12. Then see it unto me, fear not Daniel, for from the first day that thou they said thy heart to understand and to chasten yourself before that was fasting, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Are there words that bring angels into your life? That's what the Bible is saying there. Have you read Numbers 14, 28? I have come for thy words. Numbers 14, 28. And I'll begin to close. It, it, it's not supposed to be long. But let this one enter every man's spirit. A time will come. Did you, have you ever noticed that there was nothing Jesus did that he did not say before doing? How many times did he say, destroy this temple and I'll build it in three days? Resurrection did not happen just because God said it should happen. Jesus also chiseled resurrection by the word of his mouth. Can I hear amen? Yeah. He said it over and over again. The son of man is doing Jerusalem. He will be arrested there, but after three days. He kept saying that repeatedly. What is written of you that you are not saying? It's, this is why every Christian has to know the Bible. What is written of you? You just think that God will just do Believers must stop that. It belongs to other religions. Eh? Well, if God wants us to, no, God will not even dress for you. He has given you the word that you should do something with the word. You know, I read something one day. It's amazing how much responsibility God has given to you and you are trying to transfer back to God. T.L. Osborne taught us many years ago there are two prayers God will never answer and they are the most common prayers among Christians. We pray, we ask God to do what he asks us to do. Second one, we ask God to do what he has already done. Lord, undo Satan. He has undo him. He already spoiled principalities and power. <laughs> ah, yeah. Lord, save my sister. No, the word is in your mouth. Lord, help us heal the sick. Mark 16, 17. These are that shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall lay hands on this and they shall recover. Don't tell God to do what he asks you to do. It's irresponsibility. And these are the things that believers are praying for. Oh God, touch mommy. You go and touch mommy in the name of the Lord. He has told you to do that. Do you know this? How some people will suddenly realize that healing gift has been in them since, but they don't know. We are asking God. It's not your errand boy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Our parents used to pray. They would say, you're following about a Beshui. Why should God help us? With it? Why the Bible say resist the devil? Sorry, am I sharing the Bible with us? Yes, sir. Is it true that the Bible says you resist the devil? So why are you saying that, oh Lord, oh Lord rebuke this? God will just say that, I mean, <laughs> resist the devil and he will flee. You are the one. Hi. See this scripture, this word. <laughs> oh, in Hebrews 13, the Bible says, He has said, I will neither leave thee nor forsake thee, so that you may boldly say, Give me that scripture. Can you pay attention here? God's word is not for reading, reading is the starting point. What God intends, the real reason for the Bible, is that you read, you know, then you say. If you don't say, you have not perfected the equation. So look at this Hebrews. Let your conversion be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he said, he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He has said, 
Next part. So that we may boldly say, collapse all other statements in between. He has said so that we can say. The reason for what, why he said what he said is so that you can say. Glory. Hallelujah. So he has said you shall not die. So that you can say, I shall not die. That in 2023, 20, 24, 29, 38, 49, I will be there. So he said, so that you can say. Not so that you can put it under your pillow. He has said, my God shall supply all my needs. So that you can say that you know what? I will never lack any good thing. In two minutes, if you remember what he has said, can you say it now? He has said, and say what he has said. Hope nobody is praying right now. This is not prayer. This is declaring what he has said. He has said, he has said, by his stripes I am healed. So I, I am boldly saying, I live in health all the days of my life. No stroke, no blood pressure, no headache, no he has said, so I am saying. He has said, I and the children that God has given me are from signs and wonders. So I am boldly saying, my whole family is serving Jesus. He has said, so that I can say. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He has said, so that we can say. Oh, thank you, Jesus. What a blessing to know. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him by his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know, thus say the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I pray, oh, I know. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust you more. Hallelujah. He has said so that we can say. What are you saying? Every scripture is a code in the realm of the spirits. Psalm 103 verse 20. The Bible says, Praise him, you his angels, who excel in strength, that do his commandment, hearkening to the voice of his words. This is what I want to stop today. When you stand quietly at the center of your room or your office or whatever, and from your spirit you declare a scripture, you are speaking a code in the realm of the spirit. Angels respond. Now, this is the interesting thing. The Bible said that they are akin to the voice of his word. They are akin to the voice of his word. I love King James. That is, is a small letter. King James is always a capital letter for God. Small letter for man. The word, they are to the voice of his words. Now, angels respond even when it is a man that is speaking the word. They are familiar with that code. When a man does not say casually, he stands and he says, I don't know why. Of course, first Timothy talks about that. I pray that men lift up only hands. Hands lifted up is a supernatural posture. That's what the Bible says. I, I say I pray that men lift up holy hands. Why aren't? That's what the Bible says. Just like you cannot lay your feet on people. And there are some nicompos on Facebook who are putting legs on people. And you know, people subject themselves to all kinds of nonsense. Because people will not sit down to learn the word of God by themselves. So people push them into things. One asking women to strip to have their bath in the name of deliverance. You know, where do people get all these things from? An average Christian cannot, they don't have, you cannot discern between what is wrong and what is right. Satan can quote scriptures. But see, if you are a praying Christian and you are familiar with the word of God, inside you will know that they, you might not be able to place your hand and say something is wrong. There might be here for the first time now. If you are in a church for the first time, if the man is truly 
a, a, a servant of God. You will know inside you. And if you are in the wrong place, you will just say, no matter how they paint everything well, your spirit will react that there's something wrong here. Because Satan can't hide himself for too long. He can transform to an angel of light. But an angel of light, when he's talking to you, always make a mistake. He will say something that will contradict God or demand for self-exaltation. You see, this is why all those who are fooled by dreams. I love somebody, funny, somebody wrote on Facebook. <laughs> he said, Lazarus died for three days. He came back, he did not come with a book of how he saw hell or heaven. So he put died for 30 minutes. And they know 50 people they saw in hell. There was one that released a book like I said, I saw a late pastor, people in the choir in hell. And people bought that book. I was in UI, the rest of the I looked at the book. I, I, I told a lady, I said, why, why do you believe people believe stupid things? And he said that the angel said that she was wearing miniskirt. That was why. I said, number one, that woman never wore miniskirt once. She was in IVCU as a student. Pastor Bimbo, my wife was part of her protocol. They build, she built that your skirt must almost touch your shoe. She never. Says so another one, number that angel made a mistake. Wrong accusation. No, people believe all sorts. Somebody said, well, she was sleeping at the back of a church. When I told that one, I said, she saw, she saw rapture. Everybody was going, and the whole church became so bad that everybody was going, you know, just with a woman was going, and then she started coming down. I said, because she had palming on her head. So in other words, God, first of all, made a mistake. She was going up. God just saw the palm. Hey, palming! Go back! Oh, you, you see? And that day, everybody in the church became so bad. Ah. God, God, God help us not to. Are you with me? If you are wearing permanent, look at yourself. Are you sure you will float? Glory to God. Are you are you with me? Oh dear Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Angels who excel in strength, Psalm 103, verse 20, who are akin to the voice of his word. So, that was the voice that angel heard. Daniel was quoting Ezekiel, Jeremiah, sorry, 70 years in captivity. As Daniel began to mention, he started praying for Daniel chapter 9. And in chapter 9, he mentioned what prophet Jeremiah said about the return of the captives. Because angels are came to the voice of his word. When they heard the scripture being quoted by one man, he showed up and he said, I have come because of your words. Do you know demons also come because of your words? People bring captivity into their lives. There is a way you will never get me to talk. There are always ways that the Lord will lead you. When the lockdown was going to happen, I almost fought all leaders. You know, I'm always on the Jedu side, but I was to start households. I didn't know, God didn't tell me anything was going to happen. The urgency in the spirit to start household was just there. And when we started, so during the pandemic, I understood why. So I would come alone to this place, preach, and people were watching from places. When the pandemic ended, this church increased. Now, during pandemic, in between, when there was total lockdown, then I was praying and the Lord told me to tell the account department, members of the church who don't have money, especially those who are family people, let's credit the account, even if it's just 20, 20K or 10K. When I saw the number of names, it, it looked intimidating that the account will go to zero and we are not having services, so we, but we obeyed God. We did it two times. Many of you remember, some of you will credit your account. I said, through their household, let them submit. I said, let the household captain locate. So go and visit and be sure that these people are in need. Because when you mention money and Christian. <laughs> Do you know, we mention projects in the church. And so people target after service, they are going to come up with it. And usually, they are coming to church for the first time. When somebody comes to church for the first time and they start asking for money, it's a wrong sign. 
I don't respond to such. I would rather look for a worker, somebody working, cleaning, or doing something, and yeah. By the grace of God, we have some people, even the security people come and don't come to this church. I like giving to them. What's always just show up and then the first thing you're asking for after serving, you're like, excuse me, I know. But if by the Spirit we notice that there's a genuine need, we can we give beyond our church. But I'd rather give to an organized group. Yeah. We go to orphanages, they are already, we, so we try to get them to do things. But after we gave to those people during the pandemic, I can't remember where people, the church just started increasing financially. During lockdown, every day people were sending money to church, church accounts. It's amazing. When people obey God, God's instruction, it don't make sense. It sounded like we should hold. Because nobody was coming there. Even me, I had to come with special identity. We meet police on the way. Nobody, but everywhere was granted. Not once in a while. So they even said, okay, maybe for now we should stop paying all the staff. I reviewed and I said, no, continue. What God will say doesn't make sense. But at the end, you will see tremendous results in obeying the Lord. But this morning, I'm leaving you with this. This is why you must be serious with Bible study so that you can know what he has said that you may boldly say. What I said about what I said about your marriage, about your health, about your life. Look, a time will come in your life. If you are walking from here to your car, you would have said two or three things. Place your life under the word of God. Fill your atmosphere with the word of God. Walk around your room and speak. They are not empty words. John 6, 63. Jesus said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. They don't die. Don't wait. You are not married now. You can name your children now. Hiya. Yeah. What is in Numbers 14, 28? How close with that? I will never forget. Thank God he came for Kenneth taking a man of faith himself. His wife had goiter or whatever she had, and it was a serious issue. He was going about healing people, but that thing, it happens. See, you don't look at the life of a healing So now say, okay, yeah. so you see, he's sick. Elisha was sick and died of the sickness. They carried a soldier through him inside the tomb, and that one came back to life. But that anointing that raised the soldier from dead back to life did not cure the sickness. Because you must exercise your own faith by yourself. But that's on that day anyway. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that day, as Papa Igi was praying, he just knew that if the wife should go to the hospital, she was going to die on an operation table. He knew. As a man of spirit, that there are things you know you must not say out. You must pray until it changes. So all this prophecy of doom that people give around very, you can negotiate and change things if you're a man of prayer. It's allowed. As a matter of fact, when God reveals something that looks negative, it is because you can do something about it. There's still time on your side. For it is not his will that any should perish. Ah, uh, I saw you in an accident. That means you are... <laughs> no, you can do something about it. And when they give that praise to people, they start shaking. One day I came out of big treats, and a guy was looking at his palm. He just saw me. And he told me three things, and it was very correct. But I told him, I said, shut up, go away. I don't need a suicide to talk to me. And that kind of thing, they move some people. Receive prophecy and word of knowledge only from a source that you know. Be careful of a stranger coming. Can God send a stranger? It might happen, but be careful because control can start afterward. And hypnotism can set in. Do you know how many young ladies have ministered to and they've told me things that, are, things that they've been through? In the end of one so-called problem, this one, why are people subjecting themselves to all these things? The spirit that was crying after Paul in that 16, the information was accurate. It was even edifying. These are servants of God who have come to show us the way of truth. But Paul told the lady, shut up, come out of her. 
demons can trick by start with they will start with something positive. Once you nod know your head and accept, control will start. Hallelujah. 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 Oh. Are you with me? Numbers 14, 20. Let me end with this. I have come for thy words. Now look at what the Bible says. As truly as I live, see the Lord, as you have spoken in my ears. Sorry, can it be more direct than this? So what are you saying in the ears of the Lord? The Lord said, as I live, I'm not going to just make a choice of what I do with you. I'm going to listen to what you are saying. And it is what you are saying that will determine what I will do with you. Isn't that a blank check? If God says that to me, which he has said in his word, then that means it is time to start talking. Saturate your life with the word of God. I went with Egil story and started. I started just to say that, see, there might be some difficulties that are actually a portion to you to go through in life. You can either reduce the time frame ahead of time or remove the difficulty completely before you get there by what to say ahead of time. Yeah. Somehow, everybody will have one aspect of your life or the other that you will need faith to overcome. And you will have one aspect of your life or the other where grace is at work. For instance, of all the people listening to me now, all young people, if you are not married, some people will never pray about children once. Some women. Even if their husband touches them with his leg, they will get pregnant. <laughs> But for some other people, they will have to pray. And they are Christian. Am I right? Some people will never look for a job. When, when you are final year, they pick some people. It will, life, when it comes to finances, it will never be a prayer point for some people. No matter what they will always have. Some other people, it will take faith to destroy that spirit of poverty. There are people listening to me, even among unbelievers. They have never prayed about their health. They are always healthy. As some of you are here. Not because you even use faith. If I told you are sick, it never passed malaria. And when you sleep, you are okay. But some people are in and out of hospital. Even among those who don't know God. In and out of hospital every now and then. So health will never be a problem with some people. They are just never sick. They are strong as Zumarok. But some other people... Sickness, that they're always afraid of the future. Will I even live long? Fruitfulness will never be a problem. Some, some girls will never pray for husband once. In fact, they will be praying for screening. Because too many men are on their case. Where are some other people? She's, she's wondering why is nobody. So there will always be that aspect. Where things work for you effortlessly. And then there will always be also an aspect where there is a challenge. Now listen to me. Ahead of time. You can speak either to reduce the time frame of that challenge before they ever show up or to totally destroy them out of the way. Mountains can be chiseled or be leveled completely by the words of your mouth. That day, can I take it in text, but he kept praying in the spirit. Now, he didn't know that the wife too was praying one day. She had that information and I said that the day I go for surgery on this thing, I will never make. She just had that. He said the information stood there. If you ever enter hospital and they operate on you, you are not coming back alive. So because of that, she refused to go to hospital. She was always having the, some chalky spells every now and then. And when the Apostle sat on the altar praying in tongues during prayer meeting, and Jesus walked in and said that, I have never understood this theologically, but that was what the Lord said. Physically, I said that, that actually by destiny and divine arrangements, she was supposed to die on operation table. But you have trusted me and you have just changed that now. He said, tell her to go for the surgery. She'll be fine. So when it comes to divine health, God can heal directly. In some cases, he can be with you. You go to hospital and everything is. Don't despise one against the other. God is not against medicine. Do you get what I've just said now? Very true. Of course, the best way is not to get medicine involved. You can trust God for that. I get what I'm saying.
Christians feel guilty at times when they take medication. Just believe that you won't have to take it for long. As you are taking it, don't condemn or say, keep speaking God's word. That this is the last one I will take. If you have to take another day, say it again that this is the last one day. That word is stamped. Bam. Hiya. And you will never need to take again. Don't ever bring down your faith for any reason. Yes. It's not right to ask somebody for money, but you have a friend and he needs to support you. Say to us that this is the last time anybody will bail me out. If it happens, say, say it one more time that I will never need a man to help me. On the contrary, I'm the one giving to people. See, after a while, your word would have chiseled the mountain enough that is no more there. Then truly, as you have said, you are now the one giving to people. Let's rise up. Hallelujah. Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to employ you now to give your heart to Christ. And by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously. He has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.